everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey, and in this video, we're going to show you how to log your commands to the buffer and to send them out to a syslog server. So, I know in a previous video, I showed you how to set up the syslog server, and then we quickly went through the commands to set up the, the routers themselves to shoot out the commands. But in this video, we'll take it a little bit slower from the router's perspective, and we'll actually go through each command necessary to log your uh, typed in command. So we've come up to a router here. It's brand new. Nothing's been set up. I'm just going to go into enable mode. Conf T. Change the host name to R1. So we start that off. Now your log, if you do a show log, you're not going to have anything in it. And the reason is by default when you boot up a Cisco router, when it doesn't have a configuration, it will show the log messages in what's called, it's going to send it to the console, which is your screen. And as they scroll off the screen, well, they're gone. So what we have to do first, well, it's an optional thing, but really it's so useful that you probably want to make it a mandatory uh, thing that you type in for every new Cisco router you set up. So I'm going to show you the command. It's have to go into ConfT, and then we go do logging buffered. And what that's going to do is it's going to shoot the log messages to the actual system log of the router itself. So we're going to hit enter here. So it's every time you see those me messages fly up on your screen, they're also being logged into the memory of the router. So logging buffered. We also want to do logging, let's see what we got here, buffered. And we could specify a buffer size because the default, and it, it actually starts off pretty low, it's 4096. And I think that's in bytes. So we want to change that. Uh, it's sort of up to you. I like changing it to 10,000. Um, you know, you could change it to whatever. Obviously, the amount of memory on your router will dictate what you can, what the maximum will be on on your particular system. So logging buffer 10,000, which is pretty nice. So now what I could do is I can go into let's say interface fast 00. I could set an IP address. and no shut. And as usual, a message is going to come up. See these messages here where it says link up down, link line protocol up down. Usually these would just scroll off the top of your screen and they'd be gone. But now what I could do is I could show log and you could see here that I've got a timestamp and you can turn these off by doing no service timestamps. And then I have the exact message that appeared on the screen and then I could retrieve this, which is pretty nice. Okay, so, so this is good. We're logging to the actual uh, syslog of the, of the router, but how do we actually send these commands to another syslog server? How do we send it out to, let's say, a Linux machine or a Windows machine and have it record all this stuff? And to add to that, how do we track every single command that you type in? Because as you could see here, these aren't commands that we've typed in, they're just sort of like status messages. We want to have some auditing in place so that if someone messes up, we know exactly who did it, what time, and the command that they typed in. So it's pretty easy. It's a, actually a pretty new, fairly new command in Cisco. We go to conf t and it's the archive command. We're going to hit enter right there. And you can see it brings us into config archive mode. We hit question mark. We've got a couple things. But the main thing you're going to do is log. And then let's do a question mark. So log config is basically all you can do. Log config. And then you can see we've got a really long config. Config archive log config. Let's do a question mark there. So we've got even, even more stuff here. We're going to do logging enable. Logging enable. And that's going to pretty much start the logging of all commands. But we want to do a couple more things. One is very important, hide keys. And what hide keys does is it's going to hide stuff like passwords from being displayed in the log. So passwords like getting into another router, uh, BGP passwords, stuff like that. Uh, you don't want that showing up if someone does a show log. So 
hide keys will hide that. And then notify syslog will shoot the command to syslog. And you can see here it's already logging our commands. A message has come up, parser log command user console. So I'm logged in as console log command notify syslog. That's exactly what I typed in. Let me just hit enter and then I can exit out of there. So now let's say I want to configure loopback. So interface loopback zero and give it an IP address of 9.9.9.9 and give it a mask of a slash 32. Let's exit out of there. Now if I do a show log, you can see all those commands, every single command that I've typed in has been saved to the log. Even the little stuff like typing an exit to get back out of the config mode. So it's a pretty useful command. We do need to do one last thing to actually send these commands out to an external server. So if you're happy just logging the commands locally to your router's memory, that's fine. But usually in an enterprise situation, you're going to have a server just dedicated to taking the syslog stuff. And in very busy environments, it will have a RAID 5 array because it's going to get in, be getting the logs from hundreds or even thousands of routers and other systems like Windows 2000 servers or, or whatever is out there. So here, what we're going to do is pretty easy command. Go back to logging. So you're going to type in logging question mark. And then you just need to put in either the host name or the IP address of the server. So let's assume our syslog server is at 50.50.50.50. You would just do that. And you can see here it says logging to host 50.50.50.50 port 514 started. So it's pretty nice. Now every command you type in is being logged to two places. It's being logged locally to the router and it's being shot out to a syslog server at 50.50. Dot 50, dot 50. And then we'll just do a quick write mem wr and it's also going to record that as well or actually it should. Let's just do a show log for that. Uh, looks like it doesn't actually record the wr but I guess that's all right. Okay so that was a quick and easy video of how to set up the logging of commands on a Cisco router. Thanks for watching.